today was the penultimate round in Huntingman Sisk. In fact, the penultimate round in the whole of the Fide Grand Prix series 2014-2015. Now, if you remember, there are just two spots that would take players through to the candidates tournament 2016. And Caruana and Nakamura jointly sharing the lead look like they're going to be going through. But Tomaszewski still has a chance. Today, Caruana and Nakamura played. So if one of them lost today, then that would still give Tomaszewski a chance to slip in at the end. Let's see what happened. So Caruana had the white pieces. And they've ended up in a dragon. So Nakamura certainly not, uh, not backing down in any way, not playing some kind of solid variation. Um, and he does have considerable experience with the dragon variation. We join the game after nine moves. Caruana has just castled. So he hasn't developed his bishop on f1 yet. It's, this is, you could say, the modern main line. And d5 is the standard way of playing this position. It uh, involves a pawn sacrifice. So white takes and takes on c6. And here, well, it's pretty well known. It's been known for decades that... It is extremely risky to take this pawn. Black has excellent compensation. But the standard move is bishop d4, which Caruana played in a flash. And now the old way for black to play this was e5, with highly complex positions. Of course, that involves an exchange sacrifice. I mean, that's that's actually playable. But, well, yeah, generally, it's uh, it's gone out of fashion recently. And... The fashionable way to play this with black is to take on d4 and play queen b6. So, well, it, it gives black fairly free development. And it's quite nice having these four pawns on the king side intact. So knight a4, again, the standard move. And now, well, you can, you can play queen a5 here, but queen c7 is the... The one that the big guys play at the moment. It's also uh, the most popular move at the moment. And bishop c4, and this is a well known position. And here, for example, uh, the game at Kamsky Nakamura, Vikanthe 2012, continued rook b8. And the other main move is rook d8. Both those moves are popular. But here, Nakamura played a new move. There you are, all you dragon experts will be thrilled to know. About this new move, knight b6. I, to be honest, I don't think it really changes the assessment of the variation too much. White is slightly better here because of the split pawns on the queen side. And also, you know, white's development is, is a bit better. Um, you know, white controls the d file at the moment, for example. Okay, there are two minor pieces hit. Now, you could play knight c5 here. Uh, I rather like the knight on this square, but bishop f5 probably gives black enough play with the idea of moving a rook into the middle. Caruana played bishop b3, so just nudging the bishop back and protecting the, the knight, that's okay. Nakamura exchanged. The thing is, after the exchange of knights, somehow a bit of the fizz goes out of the position. And although Caruana is still a bit better here, somehow it, it's a relatively simple position for black to play. Well, I think it's evident that white is better here. He simply has better development. But black is solid. I've mentioned this nice pawn structure on the king's side already. And this inspires confidence in black's position. So e6 blocking out the rook. Queen e4, okay, nice centralization. So attacking a rook. And if bishop b7 here, well, queen e5. White is a bit better in that endgame. Nakamura played bishop a6, which perhaps he's flirting with the idea of playing c4. And Caruana struck. After 19 minutes, he thought this one through and played bishop takes e6. Now, of course, if that's taken, then the bishop on a6 hangs. But very quickly, Nakamura nudged the bishop back to b7. He's obviously anticipated this exact line. So it now means if the queen moves, then 
it's possible to take the bishop. So the bishop came back just for a move or so white is a pawn up but queen takes h2 re-established material parity but even in this position white is slightly better you can see he has very nice development still so nakamura still has a few problems to solve let's see how he did that so rook e8 okay fighting back on the central files but it's still better for white, even in this endgame. Material might be even, but white is obviously better because he's managed to put the rook on the seventh rank. Okay, h5, that's fine from Nakamura. Of course, he wants to advance his king side majority. And actually, he's also, oh, I beg your pardon, <laughs> he wants to stop white from playing g4 as well, which to a certain extent would cramp black's pawn so h5 is a good move obviously g4 anyway wants to isolate a pawn and after this exchange that opens up the f file so nakamura attacks the g pawn this looks correct so rook f1 so white is still better here threat to take on f7 so that gets defended but that means that white can take this pawn so more exchanges so it's only three pawns each on the board but still it's more comfortable for white with this active rook on c7 and also his king position is better so Caruana played king d2 and just wants to sneak into this nice square on c3 of course it's it's a good idea to bring the king off the first rank that means that white will always avoid any kind of um, back rank tricks so this is a nice idea to put the king on c3 to hassle the pawn on c4. And here, I think Nakamura made a very brave decision, a correct decision. But it, this is not an easy decision, really. Of course, both sides want to advance their pawns. But it's a lot easier for white to advance these pawns when his king is safe. Not so easy for black, but nevertheless... After nine minutes thought, Nakamura played f5. Now that is a brave move because, of course, it means black's king is rather cut on the seventh rank, but it's absolutely correct. Nakamura has judged that he needs to get his counterplay going. So, for example, if king c3, then pass pawns should be pushed. So suddenly black is getting his counterplay, his, his pawns are rolling on the king's side. So Caruana pushed his a-pawn and Nakamura exchanged pawns again so that's got rid of one of them but it's still better for white because his king is better placed than black's rook b8 slowing down the b-pawn and here I think if Caruana had to go all out for the win if he wanted to keep something in this position then he would play either rook b1 or perhaps rook f4, protecting that b pawn, and then continue to try to advance his queenside pawns while keeping black's king bottled up and cut off on the seventh rank. Black still has pretty good chances to draw, but still with some problems to solve. But I think... Caruana thought, right, I want to take no risks here. A draw suits Caruana because I will almost guarantee his spot through to the candidates. And he played rook d1, which basically forces a draw. After this, black can't escape the perpetual on the seventh rank. So this is how the game ended. And draw by repetition. They gave a few more checks. So... That draw definitely uh, suits Caruana. I think he's almost guaranteed to go through the candidates. Um, Tomaszewski only drew today. Um, and that's a result that certainly suits Nakamura. Now, in the final round, Tomaszewski's only chance is to try and beat uh, Maxime Vashilagov, his 
uh, last round opponent. Uh, even mathematically, I think it's it's going to be very hard for Tomaszewski to catch up. Uh, but I'm not going to call it yet. I'm going <laughs> to wait till uh, the games are over in the final round. But it's still looking very, very good for Caruana and Nakamura to qualify through to the candidate 2016. Um, but let's wait for round 11 to be over. <laughs>